Freak, I have a question for you. Oh, Warren. What do you know about that? I did it. I said we'll have a pumpkin carving contest and we're having one. I don't care if it's the middle of January. These day today. My day. And we're getting pulled over by an officer of the law. Every day you go up and you gather up your dead cat. It is just awesome. We're not wrong. Wow. It's a big building. I'm seriously so excited. A lot of this isn't just about me. <laughs> None of this is about you. Wow. Foam <laughs> dome, yeah. swim cap head, helmet head, cue ball, Uncle Fester. Oh, ho, ho, who's next? Yeah, because my dad is insane. Uh, you gotta cut again. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Whip <laughs> <laughs> over to Tiny. <laughs> I got this for you. Flesh and sandwich eating oh, mother. Stop it! The owner loves the car. My name is Mark Warman, and I am the sole creator of Graveyard Cars, and welcome to the 200th episode. And I'm Aaron Smith, the executive producer and co-creator of Graveyard Cars. Well, and this is a very special, monumental 200th episode. Yeah. It's totally legit to have a co-creator and a creator. Nobody has a co-creator. No, it's true. Well, it's possible. David Lynch didn't. Yeah. No, he did for Twin Peaks. Yeah. He didn't have a co-creator. No, there was a co-creator. Well, nobody knows his name. Hey, hey, but, ah, Peter, what's his name? <laughs> Mark Frost. Thank you. Oh, I was facing him. Mark Frost. Frosty One Ball. I remember him. Uh, I don't think that's his name. So Aaron and I had a difficult time coming up with the theme for our 200th episode. So we decided that the first half of the episode is going to be... We're going to take a little trip in our own backyard to an amazing little car museum collection in Salem. Some of the coolest cars in the world. I wanted to take the ghouls up there, let them check out the cars that we work on all the time, but times like a thousand. So we decided to start off with a trip to the Brothers Car Collection in Salem, Oregon. So right. this is your... This is great, isn't it? Yep. You First part of it, you can wired. see they got <laughs> an amazing amount of the old motorcycles. You? It was a lot of fun, I thought, just walking in there. You go around that corner, and there's just some of the rarest cars that you've only seen in magazine. The first impression, just walking around the corner, just amazing. Absolutely. Okay, so we walked into this car collection. I had no idea what we were in store for. We were blown away. 69 GTO, 145 Ram Air 4, four-speed convertibles. Man. I had a 67 GTO, hard top. Yeah, yeah cool. I wrapped it around a telephone pole. Look at how sunk in those gauges are. Yeah, Sorry, they're way oh, in there. Okay. Yeah, they're down inside. Jeez. No air conditioning. Of course, I don't even know if that was an option on this. Hmm. That's a beautiful car. So yeah, you walk in, you see all the cars, motorcycles. I mean, they've got, gosh, they've got one-offs of a lot of stuff. Unbelievable. They don't have um, boats. <laughs> yeah, a Maserati hydroplane. boat, right? <laughs> hydroplane, Maserati hydroplane. Never seen one before in my life. <laughs> Everybody knows that I'm a huge Mopar fan, right? But they also know that I'm a huge muscle car fan and I can appreciate cars. I can appreciate all kinds of different cars. That's a real Boss 429. That's the other thing so. is, I don't think you could go in and just order one from the dealership. <laughs> I, I kind of think you had to qualify. I don't know this stuff a lot, but there was something very unique about the Boss 429 that you couldn't just order one and that's why there aren't very many of them. When it comes to a Boss 429 Mustang, that's pretty much the epitome of your Ford collection. What's with the Ford thing? I, I mean, I just respect all kinds of different cars, my friend. I did like we all... get a stand-in that's like real looks a lot like Mark here because he's you just yeah. stole Tom Cruise like is busy doing level. Top Gun too. <laughs> that's my favorite body style. Though. It's beautiful. It's a yeah, I love the fastback. Yeah, love those. It's beautiful. A friend of mine had a Boss 302 Mustang. So when we walked in the place and we see this front row of cars on turnstiles, the Boss 429 definitely is the one that stood out to me. But there's a row of them there that blow your mind. Wow. Like Again, I don't know anything about these, but you see the hood? Wow. It's a GM custom car. I think it's called a Cherokee. Jeez. Man. One of the things that's really cool, once you get in there, they had some prototype cars. So they had a red Camaro there. Look at it, it's unbelievable. I've never seen the wheels unless those are later. I, I don't know. Maybe it's all unique to the car. I never knew about that one. Man, the detail in that car, it was just, it was like the collection. You just look at this the car and the more you look, the more you see. That it's is truly an that amazing, amazing car. Those quarter extensions are huge. Yeah, I mean, the car was really cool. It, it had the clear bubble with the Hillborn injection. Right. I didn't even think so they did stuff like that back no. then. 
Doug, we got your little uh, Autobon, Auto Bianchi. Oh, Fiat. Bianchi, he was a serial killer, wasn't he, PD? <laughs> okay, okay no, 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 okay. Mm, mm. okay. I'm glad, no, I'm glad this is happening. I'm glad this is happening so you guys can see this. Maybe we can leave just part of this in, but this is like 90% of my job. Yeah, I'm glad they're seeing He's, it too. Well, I just, I censored you all the time. I, I'm constantly cutting his stuff out. And then when I do, he gets mad and says, you've cut out my quote, brilliance. They did a lot of killing in this one, Pete. You want to show that one? <laughs> <laughs> where, would they, where would they hide the body, Mark? It's like Cousin It's car. Hillside Stranglers. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a rare car. Now, I don't know if this used to belong to Steve Giuliano or not, hmm. but I know he owned a VO2 car. So this is only, what, one of two? But of course, this happens to be a Hemi. It's an automatic. Yep, on the column. On the column. Yep. <laughs> it's something. So one car I'm super excited about is our 1970 Hemi Cuda. This is the very first time that I'll be doing a VO2 car. VO2? Yeah. So probably most of you, like me, I didn't even know what the VO2 stood for. How could you So not? I had to ask, I don't know. How many cars have you put together here? So I had to, even, <laughs> I had to, I had to ask Mark what that was. And he, get, he just said it's, the, it's a two-tone with the painted top. Uh, that's a different color than the car. That is so strange to have a painted roof. They paid extra for the two-tone, I promise you that, but they just got the default automatic on the column. And the one-eyed monster, as Tony calls it, the yep. big 120 uh -huh. Speedo. <laughs> Looks like a tuxedo. So do you actually know why they put those moldings, vinyl top moldings on a car that did not have a vinyl top? To separate the two tones. Yeah. I had to ask Mark. Did you? Yeah. You didn't know that though? I did not. How many cars have you put together? What well, we've never But you were a Mopar guy. This is your thing. That doesn't mean I didn't know you, that that's You've got how baby they did pictures that. of you walking around with a with a diaper full of poop and you're looking at Mopars. Well you can yeah. get body and paint, Willie. It's gorgeous. It is a beaut. Yeah. We've probably spent a lot of time, you know, just looking at this one yeah. Hemi Cuda, but how often are you gonna see a two tone? Right. Oh wow. Come on, there you go. Look at the dash. There's your American muscle. After we were done looking at the 71 VO2 car, we went around the corner. They have like a long ramp that goes down and you all the way back, just car after car, row after row. You're talking like one of twos, one of fours. The rarest of the rare. Cars. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, there was a Corvette that had 76 miles on it. 76? Something oh, like I, didn't, I didn't see I that. I mean, just stuff crazy. you would never even think you'd see in your lifetime. Really, Mopars as far as you could see. Yeah. All the way to the back wall and on the back wall. So even though we do super high-end cars, super rare cars, to see a bunch of them all done in the same location was awesome. And the variety of the car colors, yeah. that's, that's one of the coolest things there. Anybody that know me recognize that Scrambler? I do. You didn't paint it, did you, Will? No. Oh, the Rambler Scrambler. Yeah, a little Rambler Scrambler there. Mark had one of those too. <laughs> Mark's had one of every car made, hasn't he? I got it behind that guy's house out there near a warehouser and it was just a shell. Well, it was complete minus an engine. And then I found a 69 390 for it hmm. and built it up. It was identical to this one. So I found this car out in Thurston. I think I paid $500 for it. Didn't have a motor, but it was a, a good complete car, but it was real rusty. Mine, it was rotted out from here back. And these are built on a Rambler Rogue. I couldn't find a Rambler Rogue donor. So I ended up getting a Rambler American and I cut the quarter panels off right here because they were the same at the back. It was, all the difference was in the front. Hmm. And I see here, you can tell that there was a vertical splice somewhere in there, maybe <laughs> about here. <laughs> this looks laughing about. This, this looks like a, Well, paint shrinks this, back over This looks years. like a Mark restoration. This looks like a Mark restoration. Oh, that's a shit. <laughs> <laughs> the easiest way to tell it was a Mark Warman car, look down the side of it. That thing was choppy. It had dirt in the paint. You could see where he sectioned in the quarter. Did you look down the side? I did. See where did that vertical splice on the quarter panel? Right there. Yep. Will thinks that's my car that's sitting there because you can see a vertical splice in the quarter panel. What? They built 1,500 of these cars or something, and the odds it's there, and it happens to have a, a little bit of a wave in the quarter panel. It's his way of bringing me down. Even though I've taken him up here to enjoy the show, he can't stand it. He has to steal the limelight. He has to beat me down, put me down, hold me down, and keep me down. Well, it is Will. He's a sick man. Yeah. But I mean, you've known him for like 20 some odd years. You What's funny what is he's, he's nothing like his mom. Just was a saint. Yeah. Was a saint. I thought she's still alive though. 
Yeah, I was restoring cars while you were riding around on your three-wheeler at your grandma's house that your daddy gave you, so I guess that would make sense. <laughs> Times are good. You still ride through I think it was right after I buried my dad, so we can was talk it? about that if you want to, too. I love this car. I love this car. Okay, we could be here all day, so you guys just break into groups of two. Enjoy yourselves. When we rounded the corner and decided to head down into Muscle Car Row, I just cut everybody loose. I just, this wasn't about me, it wasn't about the show. I, I did film it because I wanted people to see everybody having fun, and doing something that they have no responsibility in, <laughs> so that's a good thing. And the eye candy that is in that place, and that's what it was. I want that Into the fray. Yeah, cool. Can we restore a gremlin? So Mark asked all of us to pick our favorite cars. Sunroof car? Oh, I hate the sunroofs. There were three sunroof cars. <laughs> I know it. They were haunting me. <laughs> the, that purple Challenger sunroof car. The sunroof was a nightmare on that car because the parts they only made in Australia. So you had to order and wait for those. And then you get them. The motor's not as powerful as it was 40 years ago. The adjustment was so difficult on it. So of all the cars that were there, I decided on the 70, 426 Hemi, four-speed, top banana yellow charger. But look at this one, top banana Ooh. Hemi. That's the same year as Mark's first charger. Yeah, the full wraparound. I guess that's what Mark's, Mark likes about them. Yeah, I think it looks good. Look at the mirrors on this, dual sport mirrors. That's an, yep. That was a rare option. Painted, body color. The top, top banana, banana. Top banana. Top banana was My a pretty favorite. yellow. I loved it. My car was top banana, right? Oh, uh, was it? Yeah, it was. Do you know what the difference between uh, top banana yellow and lemon twist yellow is? Mm-hmm. Dodge gets top banana. Plymouth gets lemon twist. Right on. <laughs> so 112, 1970. Hemis. Charger RTs with a Hemi. That's not a very big number, is it? No. I just about bought one of those back in the day. Don, Don Puzios? I wanted that car so bad, 440 four speed. I swear that thing lifted the front wheels off the ground. <laughs> but I couldn't round up enough money to buy that one, so I had to buy a Barracuda. Lucky me. Hey. <laughs> your dad couldn't come up with that <laughs> This is my car. This is my car. This one right here. I like this. It's gorgeous. Yes, it is. One of the things Mark had asked us to do was just go out there and pick out your favorite car. Which is hard enough because, I mean, how many cars are there? The Especially Mopars, yeah. you know? So that was tough in itself, but it was cool that Mark let me bring Brody up because being new to the industry and whatnot, he's able to actually see what these cars look like done, the rarity of them, yeah. and actually get like a good handle on everything. And I super appreciative for that. If I got to pick one out, as I'm getting older, I'm not into the whole convertible thing. Mm. You know, so, I, you know, this is great. It's got a Hemi, red, no sunroof. See, that convertible is like midlife crisis thing. Mark went through it for years. Everything was a convertible. Couldn't just get a nice sunroof. This, another Hemi, four-speed, gorgeous car. Not a huge fan of the black, but still a gorgeous car. So we walked past all these different Hemi cars, car after car. So then before you know it, it was like, boom, there it was. So the car that I picked out was a 1971 Hemi Challenger. And the reason I liked it is Hemi orange, white stripe, white top, power sunroof, and a four speed. It just doesn't get any better than that. Nothing about this car says I'm in a midlife crisis. This car is cool. Yeah. Well, don't be all you know, overly excited. The only thing I can say, that kid is bordering on brain dead. You had almost. What? Brody's a nice guy. He's not. Brody's a wonderful no, guy, he, but that doesn't make his brain waves strong. I'm, no, he's 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 a smart guy. He's picking things up. He's learning. He's. he's what you... you know, I would have gave anything to be up there with my dad, but unfortunately, corpses weren't allowed. Oh boy. I mean, this you could be in the passenger seat. You could be in the back. Why couldn't I drive? Well, that's just not going to happen. Yeah, I saw you guys looking at that car too, and I I took a little glance at it. All the options on it, yeah. super cool color. The sunroof, you know, right. Mark. You know, it kind of scares me having oh, to work on one of those because 
all the stories that Mark and Royal have been talking about. So. Well, we have one coming through here for you soon. Uh, not looking forward to that. <laughs> But yeah, look at this. Look at that nice white stripe. Matches the interior, matches the top. You know, it may not look like it, but I actually did enjoy this quite a bit. Being able to actually come in here and see the different options and varieties of cars just really kind of helped me get a feel for it and really understand like what we actually do and just take it even farther than what we do at the shop. Great answer. But yeah, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous car. Shaker, power windows. So for me, my favorite car there was the 1971 Hemi Challenger orange sunroof, white interior, white vinyl top. And did you see that 71 Hemi Cuda that sold at the Mecham auction for- I did. Three, what, $3 million? 3.5. Yeah, <laughs> it's so cool. No, and to see, see that in real life. I saw this car in magazines, you know, when I was just a kid. Mm -hmm. So seeing that in person, just so cool. Yeah. Okay, so we get all the way to the back of that long aisle of cars. Oh, yeah. So many Hemi Kudas. I don't know how many there were. They were endless. Then we get to the back wall, and it's yes. nothing but AARs and T8. Yeah, all the way to the Cars ceiling. all the way to the ceiling. I've never seen so many in one place. God, it was just incredible. It's row after row, and they're stacked three or four high of AARs and TAs. Oh, man. Period. Not one or two like we have here. 20 of every color and every choice in the world. On the bottom row, at the very beginning, we started walking, there was a Demon, a 2018 Demon, which is the only year they made them. Beautiful car. So I was showing uh, Justin some of the, the neat features on it. Will comes along with the zombie, and he starts picking on me. So Brody, that's a Demon. Yeah, right if you here. wanted to. You'll notice that it's, it's got options up at the crap shack too, that's what Mark didn't get. Oh, so you have like Mark's car here, and then this one, the Demon's like right here some clandestine little chat he's having with his kid, right? So I asked him to speak up. Well, he's giving me crap. It's like an extra 100 horse, right? What'd you guys drive up here in? Oh, my Mustang. Your Mustang. <laughs> <laughs> now, you'll forgive me if his little shots don't hurt. Yeah, I didn't get a demon, okay? Why not? Can't afford, oh, oh, whoa. Marky can afford real well, okay? He's saying that I can't afford a demon and I only had a red eye, right? Like, I couldn't go out and buy a demon. I chose a red eye. Okay, I didn't like the fact that they didn't come with a passenger seat and you had to pay a dollar extra to get a passenger seat in the back seat. You know that makes no sense. I don't also like the uh, demonic <laughs> head on the fender. <laughs> so you couldn't afford to, it. I happen to you love You couldn't Jesus. afford it. I can buy three demons. I can buy five demons. That's not the point. But that's his way of trying to put me down in front of his kid. He should borrow a branch from my tree. I don't do that. So. So you can buy five demons. If I wanted to go out and buy five demons, I'd buy five demons. That's not the point. But right? you said I can't get a raise. Well, how would I buy five demons if I gave everybody a raise? Sassy grass green. I love that. That's one of my favorite. Limelight? Yeah. Is that green? Yes. Okay, that's the F8. Hey, Will, what year's your 300? Uh, 22. Is it an 08? No. 08, sick, dude. <laughs> oh, a black oh. AAR, look at that. That. So we got one coming through. God, that's gorgeous. Shop soon, don't we? For a black AAR. We have an AAR. Yeah, yeah. Not, not the color, but it, the but the car. EF8 green. Yeah, yeah, that'll be cool. Side exhaust coming. Hey, out. Will, why don't you take a look at this paintwork over here and see how it's done? <laughs> Sorry, money's tight. No, it's just it, no, no, money's not tight. You sure? Why don't you go look at my? I, I've seen it. I saw. It. Who puts an elevator in their house? I need an elevator. Why? Because I yeah. like Die Hard. Wants to recreate and the movie. Thank you. Home. There you go. More, yep. more sensible person. So we're looking at these cars. I'm looking up, and then I, I just look down to make sure I'm not running into anything. And <laughs> I see right in front of me, my choice, my car. That's a, my favorite car of all time, Jeez. right there. And I think I'm seeing doubles. Two Hemi Daytonas side by side, same color. Almost identical. And my first word was probably Daytona. Gaga, -ga, goo goo, Daytona. <laughs> yep. Sure. <laughs> sure it was. So right there in front of me is two almost identical Hemi 69 Dodge Daytonas. One of the coolest things. Those are my favorite cars yep. of all time. Hemi car, a Hemi Daytona is <laughs> just, just so, sitting there. So cool. So Mark and I, we just walk around, stand right in between both cars. We stand there for probably about a half an hour, just 
kind of picking out the differences. God, oh. so just to see a collection like this. Oh yeah. Oh, this this one has the Kelsey Hayes wheels. What's that one? The steel wheels with the with the caps. Dog dish? Yeah, with the dog dish, yeah. I love the look of that. The dog dish? Yeah. I love that because that's an ultra rare, that was a recall wheel. I guess they were failing. Oh, really? So they're real high dollar wheels if you find them. Interesting. Are they four speeds? Yep, this one's a four speed. Nope, this is a torque flight. Automatic? It's automatic. Wow. Center console cars? Now, were they all center console cars? No, you, it could have been an automatic on the column. On the column? Just like you a could Charger get a or wow, RT. Wow, yeah. okay. Yeah, because remember, this was just a 69 Charger RT. Yeah. So whatever applied to the 69 Charger mm -hmm. RT in the way of that stuff applied to this car. Check that out. The oh, the side, side marker, marker housing, is, and that one's got it. That one's painted, that Yeah, I not, think yeah. those are supposed to be black. But good, good alignment on the headlights. Mm -hmm. That's a nice fit. Got the elongated style grill. Instead yeah. of the octagon. Oh yeah, this the... is the either the later one. These are more common, I think, is what Tony was saying. Yeah. But that octagon grill was maybe earlier, and that's what our Daytona had. Okay. On. Look at the texture here on the rear body panel. I now is that a is that a? It's organosol black, but I don't know that it's supposed to have that texture, but maybe it is. Yeah. That's a great Tony question there. They're both 426 Emmys, and one's a four-speed, one's an automatic. One's a four-speed, and one's an automatic. Yep. Yeah. Both are four. Color? Wait, what's that for? <laughs> Doesn't matter. I have no idea. Some executive producer, right? And co-creator. Wow. Yeah. That's fascinating. That's wow. So cool. Seeing two almost identical Daytonas right next to each other. You know, I, I know Mark said he wanted me to pick one favorite car. I, I couldn't just settle on the one. I had to take both. <laughs> had to take both. Now, for me, I'm surrounded by the best cars in the world, the rarest cars in the world, even rarer than we have here. But I also grew up in an era of custom cars. I grew up in an era where I saw one of these cars that was there in magazines, and it was from the Steve Giuliano collection, who's a friend of Tony D'Agostino's. But this car, when I saw that, I fell in love. For me, that was my pick. The Rapid Transit 1970 Duster absolutely fell in love with that car. It was totally customized. Everything was custom on that car, except basically the interior was pretty much original. They had screwed a great big tack to the dash pad, which is something kids did back in the day. But the rest of the car was full custom. The interior was stock, full custom outside, had great big, probably three inch by four inch exhaust tips coming out through a molded rear body panel. The headlight doors looked to me like they might be the normal 70 duster headlight door. And then they took another one, same side, flipped it over and then riveted them together to give it a double headlight front end. It was oh, wow. pretty creative, very George Barris-esque, except this was Plymouth that did this. Wow. I would love to have a car like that someday. I may very well build something totally custom like that. You, you know, should. I built Dragula one time. Oh yeah, I remember that. Never got a chance to finish it. Yeah. I put a 340, I was gonna make it all Mopar. So I had a 340 in it with a shorty 727 torque flight, eight and three quarter. It was gonna be a really cool car, but then well, I created Graveyard Cars and I needed to be- I co-created, <laughs> so, you know. Yeah. You had some help. So like I say, Falling in love with the custom cars is something that I didn't just do up in Salem. I did it when I was a kid. So while we did go back and forth quite a bit on, on what to do, I'm glad that we at least selected going to that museum and it's by invitation only. So not everybody gets to go, but it was fantastic. And I know that the guys had a blast. I had a blast. It was, it was really a lot of fun, no pressure. We got to walk around and look at some really nice one-off cars. You know, so at the end of the day, it was fun to go up there, check out these cool cars. He even let us run around and check these cars out by ourselves, you know? And just, it was it was a really nice day. Mark was on his best behavior. He was yes, busy he doing was. other things. So we really got to enjoy this car collection. It was amazing. And one thing I do want to make sure of is to say a very special thank you to the Brothers Collection for letting us go up there and we can't take credit for any of the gorgeous cars that are up there. We didn't do any of them. I get to ask that quite a bit since we got back. We have not done any of those cars, but I would love to do some for them. So thank you for making the first half of the 200th episode amazing. And thank as co-creator, I will say thank you for that as well. Because of the because obvious threat to untold, untold numbers, numbers of citizens, citizens this station, station will station remain on, on the, the air, air on day, and night, day and night.
One of the things that I wanted to do that I thought was really important was giving everybody, including the executive producer and co-creator, an opportunity to say what your favorite moments in the last 13 years of being here it has to be something we can actually show our audience at home. My favorite moment, I think, is when you are in your office with Emma uh, doing her nails, or helping her do her nails. Uh, Emma Marie Rose, you're next. Hello there. How may I assist you, young lady? I want um, the pink paint all of them because you want me to paint them for you i can probably do that do you have paint oh look at you go you are ready for grandpa i like it okay fm3 panther pink moulin rouge this is mini mouse paint okay oh goodness those are little fingers now i can paint a car you'd think if grandpa could paint a car he probably could paint a fingernail let's give it a shot I used to paint model cars when I was a little boy. I built one called the school bus, and it was a school bus, but it had two Hemis in it, two 426 Hemis that were blown with 671 blowers. They ran nitromethane. And, and methane. Very good, you see? Boy, those are little tiny fingers. Good oh, job. So don't touch it, mommy. Don't touch oh, it. Sorry. Yeah, you don't get a lot of opportunities to hang out with the grandkids, so when you do, you. Hey, mommy, good job, high five. Mentor pink. Any other favorite <laughs> moments? Yes. Okay. Um, my favorite moment, this is a cold open that happened way back when, but it's the one where you and Josh are running around with Nerf guns. And you yell yippee ki and shoot Darren in the face with a Nerf gun. <laughs> He saying. comes after you, and you just take off. <laughs> yeah, game over. Get the guy in. Oh, Mark. Oh, Mark. Yeah, I got to admit, that was fun. <laughs> that was hilarious. How about sentimental moments? Something that really means something to you. Something that maybe you worked hard on. You were there in the beginning. We, we had no equipment. We built a show out of it. Give me something off the top of your head. The cold open for the pilot. The, the, never, the original theatrical Yep, trailer. the real theatrical one. It was black and white. It was like this horror film throwback thing. And it took months. It was months of shooting. We would scout graveyards. That was so much work. And then it never aired. So we should show it, you know? Two and a half minutes long. Yeah. I don't think anybody wants to sit through two and a half minutes. We do what we want. This is episode 200. Well, Come I on. do what I want, and then you just kind of ride well, on the coattails and take credit for it. I co-do what I want. You know, I have a million things that I love over the years in this show, and we don't have the time to probably show it all, but I can say a few things that I have a fond memory of. Do you happen to remember when Darren got stung by the wasp? Oh my gosh, yes, yes. How does it make you feel when, when uh, Mark's gone through your, your parts? Your oh, I, must, I just got stung. Oh, don't, don't overreact, Yolanda. That was amazing. That was, you can't <laughs> teach a wasp to sting somebody. It's incestual or whatever. I think it's instinctual is the, yeah. Yeah, the bee decided it was gonna take Darren down, stung him right next to his privates and Darren went off. It was amazing. Well, what was hilarious was that Darren was on the side of the bees at first. Yeah. He's, he was like, oh, they're protecting my car, Oh yeah, they're my protecting car, my car, you know? yeah, yeah, and yeah. It, the yellow jackets are protecting my stuff. They're messengers from God. They're sent here to protect my parts from Mark, Royal, Josh, and Dougie. Get my... Whoa, there's a stupid <laughs> yellow jacket! <laughs> there, was there. Killed, there was, man. I'm allergic to those things, too. Another thing that I always look back fondly on, for a multitude of reasons, is Alyssa's wedding. She was so young. Emma was a baby. Alyssa wasn't much more than the baby. And she got married and it didn't work out. That's unfortunate. But my mom was at the wedding. Yeah. It's the only time she was ever on the show. Little two second blurb for her smiling. Short shot, yeah. I gave that amazing speech when that I gave her away. That was the most awkward speech ever recorded. Love is not breathlessness. It is not excitement. It is not the desire to mate every second minute of the day. Well, I was quoting somebody. I was there. That was, okay. that was uncomfortable. Captain 
or whatever that was that I, I was reciting. Okay, we're going to have to probably bleep that too. Captain Cornelli or whatever. Uh, whatever it was, it was awkward and totally inappropriate for your daughter's it's wedding. It's not about me, it's about my daughter's day. It is not lying awake at night imagining that he is kissing every cranny of your body. What? Yeah, we've met some stars, right? Don Coscarelli, oh, yeah. a Michael Baldwin. Now, that, this is like the Phantasm car on steroids, you know? Hey, the Phantasm car on steroids. The real creator of Phantasm. Didn't have a co-creator, that's so weird. No, he didn't. Yeah. Nobody must have been there when he had the idea. Well, no, I mean, it's, it's different. It's not how you define it. It's, <laughs> okay. Uh, it is missing there, the sunroof. <laughs> oh yeah, the sunroof. Because we had to pop out of the sunroof and shoot at the hearse. It was a factory sunroof? No, we just cut a hole in yeah. it and popped yeah. in an aftermarket. Oh, it butcher. wasn't a factory sunroof. You can sunroof. believe that. Don Coscarelli's the butcher. He yeah. cut the roof. Mopar guys. I was he young. cut open a roof. I would never do it today. Another celebrity who's also turned out to be a very good friend is Mr. William Goldberg. Oh, yeah. Ho, oh, ho, oh, who's next? Uh oh What's up, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> Goldberg. I mean, he knocked you on your butt, you know? I mean, that was... No, I tripped. So the... Uh, the movie role that you got for me, right? It's coming, it's coming. <laughs> things, yeah. things were kind of on the back burner. You know, here, have a seat real quick. Well, it doesn't mean I chose to trip. It was like kind of, it was merciful. Let me tell you something, if you would have knocked couch. me down, I don't think you would have went back to wrestling. What you don't understand <laughs> is that now is the wrestler you're dealing with. Another thing that I've always loved, the title yeah. sequence, how you, how you introduce everybody, right? Mark Warman and those title sequences, my favorite of all time was my, my idea, is it okay if it was all my this idea? This was all your idea. The, I'll give you credit where credit's due. I grew up watching the Rockford Files. So I did a whole one minute title. I think so. Opener. It was, yeah. and it was all it was just me. <laughs> big homage to the Rockford Files. Yeah, yep. but it was about me. It, it was about you. Yeah. This is Mark Warman. At the tone, leave your name and message and I'll get back with you. That's a good one. You have that one? Was, I do, I do. And, and actually, it's one of your goofy ones. The homage to The Sopranos. Woke up this morning with all my coffee gone. Barisa never told me the freezer store is wrong. But your drive through is looking good, maybe. Believe it's a fresh grind. Shame about it. Brewed over a coarse grind. Always brings tears to my eyes. Singing out. Woke up this morning, got a bad brew, got a bad brew, makes me cry, yeah, got yourself a bum. The 200th episode, Mark asked us to reminisce about, you know, my favorite times on the show, and I, you know, we've had such a blast all along, like going up there to that uh, car collection, it was the field trips, I missed the field trips. I'm excited, but I'm cold. Paintball. I really missed the paintball. Got to play uh, paintball in a wrecking yard. This was a great place to play. <laughs> yeah, got to no shoot kidding. Mark. You got to shoot Mark in the back? I got to shoot Mark in the back. No kidding. Yeah. Let the bloodbath begin. Ow! Oh, it hurts. Oh! You okay? Oh. <laughs> Another fun time was when Mark would, told me my car wouldn't do 150, and then he said it wouldn't do 130, so I took him out and proved him wrong. Royal is excited. Royal is a professional race car driver. He's amazing. He's a madman. Here goes. All right, here we go. You proved him wrong? What yeah. do you mean? I got. A, I got, did 130. Oh my God. <laughs> Piece of cake. Some of my least favorites as well as, you know, wading out into three feet of water to unplug a drain to get the car out. Oh, jeez. 
Mark was accusing everybody of turning the pumps off. They flooded the wash rack in the back of the shop there, the first shop, and uh, it wasn't the pumps, it was the drain was plugged. Oh, so really? Yeah, to go pull a piece of plywood off the, the drain that somebody had put down there to catch oil or something, I don't know. I did not do this. One of my favorite memories recently was when we got to do the Halloween episode oh, cool. and we all got costumes and we got yeah. to go to Finn's and order up and Mark puts on a scream mask and he even goes inside the restaurant to the order board and he's in there popping up and down from behind the counter. It was the creepiest thing I've ever seen, man. Alyssa got a nice Elvira costume. You like the mask, you wear that mask, okay? But he's got another thing coming. If he thinks I'm sliding my into that child's medium Elvira costume, it's not happening. Cause it's impossible, that's why. I guess at the end of the day, I'm getting paid. So there's that. When will go as? I don't know, he looked like Bigfoot or something. He had all this hair and huge hands. <laughs> I just want to paint cars. That oh, was cool. fun. We had a lot of fun on that Halloween episode. <laughs> so another one of my favorite things is all the animated cartoons that we've been doing for the show. They're just completely off the wall. Mark's talking about <laughs> going to grandma's house and my face catches on fire and coffee and a rake and all this stuff. It's kind of uh, cr sounds, yeah, it's cruel, sounds creepy. I think. But uh, yeah, some of these cartoons are hilarious. You should have seen me running down 17th Street after I had a little accident and wrecked a car. And doesn't even have you looking on the pool table? Oh, it had me drooling on it. Drooling on the pool table. Right before I... <laughs> so just kind of like when we went up to the museum and Mark's like, hey, pick out your favorite car. He wanted us to pick out our favorite moment or favorite car, being this is the 200th episode. Yeah. And I gotta say, being here as long as I have, they've become uh, our SEMA builds. Oh, those, they're fun. They're the most stressful. To say the least. You know, 2016, we, we did the CUDA, mm -hmm. and that went pretty good. That was before my time, yeah. so. We feel that we got a winner here. Yeah. And then 17, we did the Hellbird, mm -hmm. which, Pretty stress-free. And then we did the Little Red Wagon. That was my first one. Yeah, so, and then Christine, yeah, so cool. and then COVID happened, so it kind of shut everything down. Yeah. But for me personally, the Little Red Wagon was my favorite. What a cool first SEMA build for me. So the 1964 A100 pickup truck. Yeah. You know, with the blown Ray Barton 426 Hemi. Yeah. Was it 1,000 horsepower? Just under. Just great. We put a lot of work into that, and I was yeah. pretty proud of it. And then getting it down to see him having it crap out was kind of a bummer. Oh, that was. But everybody will enjoy it. It was just kind of disappointing that we couldn't get to the actual red carpet event. So I guess we spin up our mask, get the forklift, because we still need to get the thing jacked up and done. Yep. And we'll talk to Mark. All right. It's real frustrating. Real disappointing. We're gonna get it lifted four feet up in the air, and then we're gonna go out and have a drink. We had a nice dinner that evening. Yeah, we had, uh, you know, it was dim lights. We did, yeah. Had some drinks. Yeah. Um, and then we had music playing. Marvin right Gaye. It was Marvin Gaye. Burgers. Burgers. <laughs> yeah. That was a good time. <laughs> some live music that later was... on. <laughs> <laughs> Little Willie oh. Willie won't, won't Hello. quit drinking and <laughs> thinking of the alcohol. You know, it's been a real treat to be able to be here for 200 episodes. You know, my best friend, Mark, people don't always get to do that. You're a spastic colon. A spastic a colon? A spastic colon. How's that? It's a colon that doesn't do its job like it's supposed to. People don't always stay best friends for such a long time. You have bizarre shaped ears. You have no hair. You need to shave that off. You Mark, nice I, can't, I can't let go. I can't let go of this. Here's the three of us after all these years mm -hmm. still together. This is pretty awesome to be a part of this. June 14th, 2012 mm -hmm. was our season premiere on a network called Velocity. It had just changed from HD Theater to become Velocity. Yeah. Now it's Motor Trend. The okay, 200th okay. episode is almost gonna air really close to the 10th year anniversary. Oh, so thank you everybody for ten watching years. Graveyard Cars for 10 years, 200, 200 episodes. episodes. Thank you for riding on my coattails and keeping them clean. Oh, happily. Yeah. yeah. I've known Mark almost my whole entire life. 
Uh, my name is Will Scott. I've been painting with Mark since 1997, since I graduated high school. And for us to be at 200 episodes, when I didn't even thing. think somebody could start a show yeah. doing only Mopars, and to be this successful and doing it, it's awesome. I'm glad that we're a part of it. Yeah, it's amazing to be a part of the team, being able to work on you know, cars that you grew up with your whole life. It's not even and work. It's No, not really. So here's the 200 more episodes, if Mark makes it. I'd just like to thank everybody at home for watching Graveyard Cars for 10 years, 200 episodes. And yeah, he's kind of a co-creator. Thank you. Well, I'm not proud of it, but. <laughs> here's to, here's to 100 more. We're gonna yes. go for 300 in a feature film. Pete, you in on a feature film? Hell yeah. Tiny Dancer, you in on a feature film? Y'all be watching as soon as we're coming, right? Oh, Can yeah. we do that thing with the, where it shocks the seat like they used to do in the 50s, that shock theater? Sure. Can we do that? Why not? All right. Can it be rated R? No. <laughs> Don't understand why. All right, I'll give you a hard PG-13, but, but we'll be very selective. Can I say in that? I think you get one in a PG-13 film. Okay. Yeah. We're yeah. gonna bleep, no, that's two for this. We, that's bleeped, that's bleeped. Sorry. <laughs>